Hi everyone, I'm Adrienne Everhart, your Feminine Energy Dating and Relationship Coach, and today I am so excited because I have a special guest on my channel. His name is Michael Sorensen, and he is the author of I Hear You Book. Now, as you know, I don't have a lot of guests on my channel. I like to keep my material towards dating and relationships and how to better your relationship, but I do always keep expanding what I'm learning and what I'm studying as a person, and let me tell you the day I discovered Michael's book everything changed for me I heard a lot of you know my tools things I that I teach you like my really really get him tool but I heard them from the perspective of a man and it really just helped me so much because Michael isn't just like a marketing guru he has lived it and he's happily married too so ladies let me introduce you to Michael Sorensen hi Michael hi Adrian thanks for having me yeah, we're really excited to have you on this channel. You know, there's a lot of male coaches out there that are, you know, focusing on dating and relationships and things like this. And I'm not so sure they have the success. And that's the thing that really struck me when I started reading your book is that you immediately um, went into sharing real life examples and stories. There was one that struck me where you were in the, you know, having a, a deep conversation with a woman and she was just giving you all of this information about herself and, you know, at the same time wondering like, how do I validate this person? How do I let them know I'm here and engaged with them on this other level? And we've all been in a situation where we've talked to someone and they're like, yeah, okay, uh-huh. <laughs> right. And they're not really getting us. So, um, you know, your book just puts it in such a wonderful perspective. Just give me a little bit of background about what really charged you up to write this book what made you think that you know everyone needs to know how to hear someone how to listen how to validate and you know empathy versus sympathy there's so many good things here but what really charged you up and to get you going to write this book sure sure so a little over 10 years ago now, I started seeing a therapist uh, to get help working through a number of different issues in my life. And I mentioned in the book, and I still now preach that I highly recommend a good therapist for basically everybody in life because life is difficult, you know, and we're not often taught uh, the most critical skills, which are relationship skills, which are learning how to deal with the emotions, you know, that we're feeling and how to navigate life. And so when I was meeting with this therapist, I got help. Uh, working through the issues that I went there for. But what I didn't expect is that I came out of that experience. It was four years of therapy. It was not just like a quick in, quick out. I came away with a whole slew of valuable life skills. And one of the ones that really stuck out to me, Adrian, you, you mentioned is that concept of validation, essentially helping people feel heard and understood, right? And, and I, it, it's funny because as I was learning about validation, I started having experience after experience after experience where I was connecting deeper with people uh, or where they weren't validating me or I wasn't validating them. I suddenly realized how quickly it put walls up, how quickly they got defensive, how quickly I got defensive. And so long story short, I started trying to explain validation to people because I kept thinking, gee, this is like a superpower. This is so powerful. And I couldn't find uh, resources that taught it in the way that I felt was most valuable. And so I, I ultimately had to fight, you know, my own inner critic saying, well, who are you to write a book? You know, you're not a therapist, you're not a doctor, whatever. I pushed through that and I decided to write the book with the hopes that it would help at least a handful of people, right? I mean, it sounds cliche, but truly that was my mom. Like if this yeah. helps one person, it's worth a shot. You know, here we go. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's, that's how I kicked off my own career. I was like, I've stumbled upon some magic here and it helped me. And I just have, maybe if I just, the first little group of ladies I taught a class to, it was a class of 10 ladies. And I was like, if I can just change these women's lives, yeah. like I've done it, you know? Yeah. I, I love this. And, and the cool thing is, is that while you were writing this book or at least gathering a lot of your information for it, you were single and you were dating, correct? Yes, correct. Now I teach, you know, masculine, feminine energy. Do you think that validation, first of all, maybe just give us a brief overview, overview of how validation works uh, versus um, active listening. I think, is it, is it active listening? Yes, active or, or reflective listening. Reflective mm -hmm. listening. Maybe kind of clarify those two and just, 
When you're out on a date with someone and we've all gone on on a first or second date with someone where they're just telling you their whole life story and you're just like, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? But maybe tell us a little bit how to handle a situation like that and, and what yeah. dating was like doing all of this. Sure. So perhaps I'll kind of back into it. First, I, I will briefly define validation for those who might not be familiar with it. Validation, like I mentioned earlier, is helping somebody feel heard and understood. And, and I have identified two main parts that validation has. One, it identifies the emotion that someone's feeling. And two, it offers justification for feeling that emotion. So for example, if, if I'm talking to you, Adrian, and you're telling me all about uh, you know, this really difficult dating experience you had way back when, and, and you're looking for validation, right? You're telling me about how horrible it was. You're wanting me to not just go, hmm, interesting. You know, kind of like that level, that separated feeling. You want me to go, you gotta be kidding me. Like he, he actually said that, right? I can't, I can't believe he would do that. That's validating because I'm, I'm tying into the emotion that you're feeling. And then I'm offering some justification for it, right? I'm saying, geez, that's crazy. I, I don't blame you for feeling that way. And what's, what's tricky is that most of us in life don't default to that. I mean, sometimes we do, but if somebody comes to us with a problem, for example, so maybe you're on a date with somebody and they're complaining about their coworkers and they go on and on and on, most of us will think that they want advice, right? Most of the time when someone's complained to us, we think, well, they must want my opinion. So what do we do? We give them unsolicited advice because typically <laughs> they haven't actually asked for it, right? They're just complaining. And we say, well, you should just tell them that you don't like that. And they, they typically say, well, I already tried that. And then this is what happened. And you say, well, then why don't you do this? And then they start getting defensive almost, right? And you're like, what's going on? So suddenly what could have been a connecting experience turns into a frustrating one because now they're defensive and upset and they don't know why. And you're kind of recoiling because you're thinking, I'm just trying to help. Why are you getting all angry? <laughs> well, the reason is, is because they wanted validation, not advice. They wanted to feel that you heard and appreciated what they were going through rather than just jumping in and trying to fix the situation. You know, I'm over here just like giggling and cracking up because um, you're putting this in a, in a different way. And I love it. It's a male perspective way because <laughs> The, the female perspective, I'm always telling women, don't fix it. Let the man will fix whatever is going on. You know, masculine energy wants to fix and do and solve problems. It doesn't mean that women can't either. But in the relationship, you'll get so much more charge out of those polarities of masculine and feminine if you let the man uh, fix it. And this means don't, don't give everyone advice, but it also works very, very well in, in general with, with everyone. Right, right. Yeah, and it's, it's not always, like you said, it's not always men that are the fixers and it's not always men that are bad at validating. You know, I, I share an experience in my book. One of, the, one of the experiences that really pushed me to it was I was dating a woman who was great at listening. You know, she, would, she wouldn't interrupt me. She would listen to everything that I was saying, but she wouldn't connect with me emotionally. And, and it was funny because I don't know if you, Adrian, or maybe some of your viewers have watched the It's Not About the Nail YouTube video. Uh, you're shaking your head. Okay, I I'm not familiar with it. That's okay. I have to send you a link afterward. It's okay. really quite funny and somewhat ridiculous. It's, it opens up on a scene of a woman and it's cropped pretty tightly and she's saying, I just, it's this constant throbbing in my head. I just, I can't, I can't figure it out, I, but it's always there. You know, it cuts to her boyfriend who's sitting there and he's looking concerned and it cuts back to her and she's like, and I just, mm, it's the sharp pain. And then the camera pans out and she has a giant nail sticking in the <laughs> middle of her forehead. And so eventually her boyfriend or husband goes, well, if you do have a nail sticking out of your forehead and she says, it's not about the nail, stop talking about the nail. <laughs> you always try to fix things, you know, and, and, and they kind of go back and forth. And it's, it's funny because it's ridiculous. You know, and I'm cognizant of the fact that it's a stereotype that women are emotional and men are like that. And yet, you know, I understand in your coaching, you do recommend that people understand and recognize those traditional male or masculine, I should say, and feminine roles. Mm -hmm. And yet at the end of the day, it is true that most of us don't want to be fixed. We want to be heard. We know how to fix things ourselves most of the time. And if we don't, then we'll ask. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. So everyone who's watching this video, you can see why if 
if you get any book this year, go get Michael's book. He, you're also on Audible, I believe as well, correct? Correct. Um, I really like having the book in my hand because I make notes and I just, just filtering things in a different way. Um, because a big thing, a big thing that happens, even when you're in your feminine energy and you're like, I'm not going to fix this for this person. I'm going to, I'm going to receive, I'm going to listen, I'm going to validate. And that, that date you were on or, or that person you were dating, it just cracked me up. Just how she, you would talk about how well she would listen to you, but she just wouldn't have any feedback at all. But sometimes you, you think is validating like I need to agree with this person. What what do you have to share with with that? I love that you bring that up because that is one of the first concerns people raise when I you know teach this in corporate settings or in you know uh, couples training and things like that. Is they say, well, okay, I, I get it if I agree, but I'm not about to validate somebody if I disagree. You know what what if what if they're accusing me of something even and it's false? Then I'm not going to validate that, right? That would be bad. And my answer to that is always, no, you, you can. In fact, you ought to. It actually helps you in a conversation where you disagree with somebody to first validate them. And, and you know, Adrian, in the book, I share an example. I, I won't go into it in depth in the book, or excuse me, I share the example in the book. I won't go into it in depth here. But the long and short of it is I had a coworker yes. who uh, was notorious for taking literally hours of my time whenever he was upset about something or worried about something. And we'd sit and we'd talk in circles. And my typical uh, method was to assure him, which is actually invalidating, saying, don't worry, it's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. And every time I did that with him, and mm -hmm. frankly, any other human being, uh, mm -hmm. we just go in circles. And yet I realized at that moment, I'm, he's not hearing me. He's not listening to me because I'm not hearing him. I'm not validating his concerns. And until I do, we're going to keep going in this circle. And mm -hmm. so in that particular moment, I, I validated him first. I looked at the situation and I thought, okay, I can see where he's coming from. He's not seeing it accurately, but from his perspective, it does make sense why he's upset. And so mm -hmm. I told him that. I said, you know what? I actually really appreciate you bringing this up. And from your perspective, all you see is this guy coming in and doing this and this and that. And of course that's concerning to you. Yeah. And he said, you're right. That's exactly it. Thank you. And I said, and I think you're missing some pieces to the puzzle here. Do you mind if I, if I frame this out? And he said, oh yeah. Okay. And we were able to talk through it and I was able to, to paint the full picture for him. And that conversation was 15 minutes instead of what could have easily been two hours, yeah. all because I changed my approach. I validated him first and then shared my perspective, then gave him the feedback. Yeah, because one of the things that you talk about in your book is you actually have this, uh, you know, formula, and I'm all about formulas, I'm all about processes and doing things in a particular order. I have a tool called Really Really Get Him Tool, which is you look at the emotion on his face, and you say, wow, you must be feeling really whatever the emotion is. Yeah. And a lot of times guys will go, no, I'm not feeling that. And that's fine, too, because at least you're, you know, you're connecting. You're not just having this head nodding, going in one ear and out the other. You're connecting your heart to this person. Right. And, and, and validation is, is just such a deep uh, topic and, um, you know, so important for humans to do. It's, it's so unfortunate that we just don't default to it, <laughs> that we go, <laughs> we go into fix it mode. But I, I do, I do blame our, our brains for that. You know, we're right. all, always about fixing, right? <laughs> Another example, you were talking about a coworker where um, you were maybe being looked over for a promotion and you said something and it just stuck with me. You said, I kept my cool. Hmm. And this is one I think we all need a lesson in is that we know to validate. We know not to jump in with the problem solving, but you're going to learn more about it in Michael's book. <laughs> But how do we keep our cool when someone is like really triggering us mm. on a topic? It's funny you ask that, honestly, because that has been the past three hours before this call, I've been working on addressing that with a podcast that I'm going to be recording today. Mm -hmm. And essentially, it, at least in my mind, it boils down to just learning to look at the truth of a situation, the truth versus the distortion. So... To, you know, truth is factual. It's what you know for sure. It's what actually happened. It's, it's, it's you know, so 
if we make up a hypothetical situation here, if you're talking to a girlfriend and you know, she said something about you that wasn't true to somebody and it affected you. Well, the truth is she said something that wasn't true. Like that's fact, right? And you probably have multiple witnesses that can corroborate that. Okay, that's the truth. Where we typically go with that though, is then we fill in the blanks with uh, what was her intention? What was her motive? She meant to hurt me. You know, she, she did this unwilling, you know, or um, deliberately, all of these different things. That's distortion now, right? We're, we're, we're now taking the truth and then we're twisting it into, to mean something that we don't know is accurate. And that's where our emotional discontent comes from. So that's oftentimes where the anger comes from, where the hurt and all of that comes from, where if we can take a moment, and this is why I mean keeping our cool, take a breath, right? Think through the situation, say, okay, what is the truth and what don't I know? Then ideally we go back to our friend and we ask more questions. We try to get more insight. We try to fill in the gaps with truth rather than our own assumptions. And then that helps us have a more human, a more level-headed uh, conversation with the person. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, because it, it's what you're basically saying is, you know, what I teach my clients, which is don't get up in your head. When you stay down in your body, you know, a lot of times someone will say something to us and it will just trigger us wildly. Yeah. And we want to, we want to go into a debate or the claws come out or we bring up our own fears, our own insecurities from our own past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so layered, but when you you can train yourself to just kind of stay centered and uh, connected to that person. I know that you are also a fan of John Gottman mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, what a wonderful researcher we have. <laughs> he, he had this uh, one phrase where I've taught my clients to do a similar thing, which is when, when you're really in the, the thick of it, you just look at your partner and say, this is the person I've chosen. And this is the path I've chosen. And this is the person I love. And it brings you to a much more humble place where the ego isn't present and mm -hmm. the brain's not running on automatic pilot and you're able to connect your heart to that person. So I, I love the, the process, how you break it down, uh, keeping your cool, breathing, what's true, getting that clarity through more questions mm -hmm. um, and hopefully end up having a good conversation with your partner there's a couple of phrases you mentioned in your book, just, they just like, just light bulbs. And one of them is, is when someone's telling you about something, you go, I understand. Hmm. And how that doesn't really help someone. So I want to talk about, I understand. Yeah. Don't worry. And also when someone really doesn't do their best, they haven't had their most successful go at something and you're honest. Right. 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 Yes, yeah, so I, I, love, I love that you bring up those examples because oftentimes that's what's most helpful for people to recognize it. Those are all invalidating statements, or at least the first few that you said. And, and what I mean by that is they discount or downplay whatever the other person is feeling. So like you said, don't worry about it is, is pretty obvious, right? They're saying, I'm worried, don't worry. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> like that, that doesn't really help. And really what it's saying is you're wrong for feeling that way. You shouldn't feel that way. Uh, I'm scared. Don't be scared. Well, I don't know if it's going to work out. Oh, it's all going to work out. You'll be fine. Right? All those things just, ooh, they just, they shut the person down. One of the lesser known ones is to say, I know exactly how you feel. Yes. Because do you really, huh. right? Can anyone really, and you're shaking your head, you know, right? <laughs> we, we can't really ever exactly understand what someone's going through because we have totally different pasts. Right? We have totally different backgrounds. So while you may be able to relate, you know, if they're going through a death in the family and you just dealt with a death in your family, you absolutely can relate. It's, it's a simple semantics. It's a simple word change. Rather than saying, I know exactly how you feel, I recommend saying, oh, I, I, I can relate to that. You know, I've gone through something similarly. And it shows a tremendous amount of respect when you say it that way. Or when you even go so far as to say, I... I'm not even going to pretend to know how you feel right now. You know, I, I, I can imagine you're going through this and this and that, but respect, right, is basically what you're sharing with a person. And that is so powerful. It's such a gift to the other person. And that's what validation, that's what honing in on our language does. It helps us show that respect for the people that we talk to. 
Oh my goodness, Michael. I love that one. I'm not even going to pretend, you know, that just brings such gravity to it and such emotion. That is such a beautiful statement. You have done some fabulous, I, I mean, just really I, fabulous work with this book. I cannot encourage people enough to, it's enlightened me. Not that I ever know everything all the time, but <laughs> you always need that new, and so rarely, you know, so rarely do I turn on a podcast and do I read a book that like really like ch ch starts to change me for the better instantly. It starts to speak to you. So I really can't, you know, I really recommend everyone check out this book, check out more of your work. You talked about a, a situation where I think it was someone was an, ath an athlete really didn't do their best and how yeah. sometimes a person will say, well, you gave it your best try and, uh, and that's actually, is that invalidating? It can be. So yeah, and it's, it's fun that you bring this one up because I don't often get into this on podcast interviews. And yet it's, it's a, another powerful principle that validation is not manipulation, right? That's one thing that I want to clarify here is that we're not, I don't teach a principle to control people or to make them feel a certain way or to make them feel better, right? That's not what validation does. Validation is, is sincere, authentic connection. And it's showing the person that you just like, just like you mentioned, Adrian, you can see an emotion on their face. Mm -hmm. It's calling it out. You know, it's saying you look hurt, you look upset, you look frustrated. That's all sincere connection. So in this particular example that I gave in my book, it was of a young, a young man who was playing soccer competition, soccer, and he was the star player on the team, so to speak. And he was used to carrying his team. And, uh, and this particular game, he just did not play well. You know, he missed shot after shot and he was not on his A game. And so he comes back afterwards and he's talking, he has heads, heads down. He's talking to his dad and he's saying, I totally screwed that up. Like I lost the game for my team. Mm -hmm. Now, most parents will probably respond how? Will probably say, oh no, you're fine. You, <laughs> you, you played well, you played great. But yeah. did he, you know? It, and, and he knows that. And most of us know the, the truth of a situation. Now, we don't often like to have it thrown in our face, but we also don't like it when everybody just ignores it because we know that now they're lying to us. And so in this particular instance, if the father said, no, you're fine, you did great, you know, don't worry about it. Well, where have we heard that phrase? It's invalidating, right? It's saying, no, don't feel bad. You did play well when you actually didn't. So what I recommend instead is trying to find a way to tactfully tell the truth. You know, and, and it's, it can be scary sometimes because you feel like maybe you're dogpiling on the person. But if, if this young man comes up to his dad and his dad says, yeah, you weren't on your A game. <laughs> you, you, you just didn't play as well as you typically do, period. And at the end of the day, that's life. And at the end of the day, there were other people on the team too. So I, I know it feels like this was your loss. Yes, you didn't play your best. No, this is not all your fault, right? So all of those phrases are factual. They use the word and instead of but. So if he said, you didn't play well, but it's not your fault, uh, that discounts the first part. So it's a very deliberate way of speaking that allows you to, to be truthful, yeah. to connect to the fact that, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> it really does not feel good. Mm -hmm. If you have that, that type of a communicate, that type of a conversation with someone, it actually allows them to let it go. It allows them to feel and process the emotion, the fear, the embarrassment, the shame, whatever it is they're feeling. And they go, okay, yeah, that's true. What I'm feeling is accurate. What mm -hmm. I saw is accurate. Yeah, I didn't play well. And that doesn't have to mean I'm a bad person. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to let it go. I love this so much because it's not manipulation. This is a big thing I teach. Uh, I don't mean to keep having such fan moments with you, I really <laughs> know, but, <laughs> but it's just so, it's so refreshing to hear this, so many important things that build a person closer. No manipulation, that honesty is about having trust. And I often tell my clients that this is the most honest work you will ever do, which is just being in your body and being in that place of truth. And, and just like you, you don't use the, but you use, and I get everyone to use yet, <laughs> you oh, like know, yet. 
<laughs> so just let's talk a little bit about some husband and wife stuff or even dating stuff that happens. Sure. Sometimes a, a man will lose his job. He will have or a very bad day at work or he will get very sick. And guys really get down on themselves um, when they go through something like this. And a lot of women, it may be many generations before us that we're supposed to make you feel better by getting by right lots of words of encouragement or, or words of action so in situations like that like you know just like with the athlete you were talking about how do we how do we somehow phrase this with men you know just as a husband and, and you know a, a guy yourself how does it feel what feels best when you're having these really down and out moments as a man and is it true like men really do just need to go to the cave sometimes like to kind of blow off that steam what sure. do you feel sure so first and foremost one thing that i want to point out and i'm sure you teach this too adrian is that it's never our responsibility to make someone feel better right to, to make them happy and i find that historically women fall into this trap of codependency right which is what it's called which is feeling responsibility for their husband's happiness or feeling responsibility for their children's happiness and that's not healthy. And that actually creates a divide in the relationship rather than closeness, which is very counterintuitive, right? And, and we don't have to get into codependency at length here, but I do wanna first point that out that for anyone listening, if they feel like it's their responsibility to make their husband happy, that's an opportunity for you to work on yourself right there because that's driving you and your husband apart. And so I strongly recommend that anybody who feels that way does some research on codependency. Uh, I have articles on my blog. Uh, there's, of course, fantastic books by Melody Beatty uh, and others on the topic. So nevertheless, that aside, right, recognizing that you're not responsible for your husband's happiness, you certainly want him to be happy. You know, hopefully you love him. Hopefully you care about him, right, or your boyfriend or whoever. And so to answer your question directly on, on what helps, well, first and foremost, it's not fixing it. Right. So it's going back to what we were talking about. And especially if if that man has a lot of that traditional masculine energy, there's there's some pride there oftentimes. Right. Yeah. Their pride's wounded. I lost my job or I had a bad day at work. And if if someone, anyone, but even especially your wife comes in and says, well, you really should have worked harder. I told you that was going to happen. Right. <laughs> or you say, you know, whatever it is, that's obviously not going to help. But also saying, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. It's going to feel better. That doesn't help. And so the most effective way is to work on validating. And so if, if he comes home, let's just say, for example, that he did lose his job, right? That's a pretty big blow yeah. to, to your ego. If he comes in and you say, well, how was work? And he says, I was fired. You know, I, I lost my job, mm -hmm. period, right? Because he's probably still in the shock. Mm -hmm. Connecting with what he's feeling. Clearly he's in shock, right? So going, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm so sorry, what happened, right? And, and obviously, maybe I shouldn't have picked that example because that's the heavy one, right? There's a lot of pausing, a lot of asking. There's a lot of connecting that has to happen there rather before I can just give you like a quick phrase to say. But that's wonderful though. That's right out of the gate is just kind of meeting him where he's at right. in that moment. And, and that's what this trust is about. This is a this is why I'm fine or it'll be fine is such a horrible thing to say to a person because you're not really connecting your heart to them. They want to trust you. They want to connect and feel that compassion with you. You know, there's a whole generation of people. So I've been told that um, they are all born special and they are all born doing their best. And I, I come from the reality that we are all unique and we have special qualities. Oh yeah, we mess up and yeah. this is part of the deal. And just having that person who isn't going to be a, a yes man or a yes woman to you and, and you can entrust them with your heart. It just goes right. so far in a relationship and your book just, I mean, it just goes much deeper into this. I wanted to ask you also, um, just to kind of close it out. I don't want to keep you here all day, but I could, <laughs> I could talk to you all day about this stuff. 
texting is one of the most popular ways we are communicating these <laughs> days. Um, and things do get, uh, thank God for emojis, because things do get <laughs> a little confused and, and misunderstood while we're communicating with someone. At what point can you have like a boundary, but also validate when a conversation, you feel like it's really going off the rails? Because going back to what we were talking about men, a, a lot of times, like if the guy does lose his job or if he is stressing out, there's a lot of family problems. The man will sometimes push the relationship away. He'll, he'll push the woman away, or at least she'll feel that way. And then you just have this scant text communication. So just, you know, just what are your feelings about texting and resolving topics or heavier topics, boundaries, validation, <laughs> Whatever you want to share with us about that. It's a pretty sure. broad topic. So texting is, it's a beautiful thing and a horrible thing, right? For connections and for relationships. And I, I laughed when you said, thank goodness for emojis, because holy cow, that does help a lot. And yet I, I can't tell you how often I receive messages, emails or whatnot from clients or from readers saying, well, I just, I'm texting him this. And then he responds this way. What do I do? I'm like, call him. <laughs> you know, like you, you can't, you know, it's the same thing at work. It happens all the time at work with colleagues. Suddenly I, it comes to my attention that there's this big blow up and I say, well, what happened? Well, here's, here's all the emails. And I go through and I start reading the emails. I'm like, why did you not call them here? You know, because it just got worse and worse and worse as you went down. If you can walk <laughs> over to someone and call them, it's much easier to validate. It's much easier to realize, oh, I'm talking to a human right now, not just texting something a robot so yes you can validate via text you know and it doesn't even have to be this long thing right like my wife uh she uh, got some unfortunate news the other day at work and we were just texting and it didn't feel appropriate to call her but i can respond and just go oh that sucks right period it doesn't i don't have to get into anything more but that's validating and then we can talk more about it in the evening so texting sure it can be great uh, when in doubt, if it's ever going off the rails, just call the person, just go walk over to them and talk to them. It's so much easier to resolve conflict. I, I love that so much. Um, cause I tell my, my clients, I always say if, if things are kind of like a little feeling a little hot, cold with the man, he's going through something. You can always say, use your really, really get him tool, which is validation, but then say a phone call would feel lovely. What do you think? And kind of yep. leave it up to that person that I'm here, it would feel wonderful to connect over the phone. What do you think? And if they Love agree, that. you call them. So last question, does your wife ever go, oh, Michael, there you go again, validating me. Can't you just, <laughs> well, can't you just brush off what I'm saying? Oddly enough, oddly enough, she calls me out when I'm not validating her, when I'm <laughs> invalidating her. So I still, I still fall into the trap. You know, it happened just, just the other week where she was sharing something with me and I started trying to fix it. And I was like, well, you should do this and this. And I'm embarrassed that we talked for about five minutes. And of course she was starting to get a little more defensive. And she's like, I just wanted you to validate me. Like, I, didn't <laughs> I was like, ooh. <laughs> Didn't you write a book about it, honey? Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I was like, it okay. Yeah, but, but it's valuable to have the vocabulary, you know, my wife, my, my family, you know, most of my close friends now, we're all aware of it. We can call it by name now. And that, like I mentioned at the beginning, is one of the trickiest things of dating and of any relationship is that oftentimes we want that validation or the other person wants validation. And if we don't recognize that, that's where we start to go off the rails a little bit. And so it comes down to understanding it. And it's fantastic if your partner understands it too, because like that little exchange that my wife and I just had, she can say, I actually just wanted validation and I can go, oh, now I understand everything <laughs> and we go from there. I love it. I love it. Well, Michael, again, I, I hope to have you on my channel another time and we can have another discussion and uh, maybe go over what I call scripts. You know, you have these great replies about things and, and I do the scripting with women uh, in my book, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. There is a lot of validation in there. But it so helps to have this refresher and this other perspective of, uh, you know, validation and empathy, knowing the difference between empathy and sympathy. I mean, ladies, I could just go on and on about all the hot topics that are in Michael's book. But Michael, what is the best way that if people want to find you, uh, what are the best ways for them to learn more about your material and your book? 
Yeah, best place is on my website, michaelssorensen.com. I uh, imagine we'll post it in the comments below or in the description below. Uh, but that's where I write periodic blog, blog posts, elaborating on it, diving deeper into validation. I also have a podcast called the I Hear You Podcast. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and, and I always appreciate the opportunity here, Adrian. And if anybody has any other questions for me, maybe I didn't dive in deep enough into something or you would like more explanation, feel free to contact me via my website. I love hearing from listeners and readers. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure all the girls will really take advantage of that. Um, it, again, it's just such a breath of fresh air to have someone who understands this and also gets, you know, how it works in marriage relationships and dating and also just, you know, how it affects us at work and our friendships and, and all sorts of things. Just so much food for thought here. I really appreciated you have, being on my channel today, Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.